seconds. Okay. Well, f for me personally, the outdoors is everything. And it, being a Kiwi, you grow up running around on the beach, eating sand, eating mud. You, you grow up with your hands and your feet you know, in the earth in some sort of way or another and your family really encourages you just to get out there and and sort of grow and sort of as a person and uh, and, and some of the most valuable experiences I've ever had uh, in New Zealand and in the world have been in the outdoors and it's, it's yeah, it's the best place to... Okay, that was brilliant. You didn't know that I'd planted him over there, did you? But we, we've got one of our first advocates, one of our spokespeople for the outdoors there. It's great, and we're going to need more of those. I, um, I talked to my wife. This Today is my daughter's eighth birthday, and she's with her grandparents and my wife in Hamilton, where I'm supposed to be, except I forgot to tell them the outdoors forum was on. <laughs> My name is Mud. She said, well, what are you doing instead of going to celebrate your daughter's birthday? I said, I'm talking about the value proposition of the outdoors. And she said to me, she's a writer and a journalist and a spin doctor at the MSD. She said to me, value pro and she teaches plain English speaking. She said, value proposition, pah, it's just jargon. What do people mean by that? The first thing she did is she goes and grabs the concise Oxford Dictionary. Click. She throws that to me. She, she looks up proposition and she says, noun or verb? Noun or verb? I'm going, what? She says, typical Davidson. You're there talking about the value of having sexual relations in the outdoors. <laughs> said, your daughter is a lot more valuable than that. <laughs> so, you know, I was on a, a no-win here. <laughs> so I thought, well, I've got, to, I've got to head off on this journey to understand what a value proposition is, and I thought I'd take you with me. So the first thing I did was, uh, where do you go for expert advice nowadays? I tried YouTube. I thought to myself, <laughs> I'll YouTube value proposition, and I'll look for an expert, a guru. So... I found this guy. So, you know, you come out with all these faces. I thought, this guy has got to be the answer. So let's see what he's got to say, and we'll see if we can learn anything. We need no noise. And that is their customer value proposition. So a value proposition, very simply stated, is a promise of value that customers can expect from your product or from your company. Why do we call it a promise? Because it is the anticipation of value. The customer makes the commitment to you before they actually experience the value. So you have to communicate this to your customers in order for them to make that investment in your product or in your brand. So when we define a value proposition, we define it more precisely as a set of promises that you make to a defined target audience that are differentiated from other alternatives that customers might consider and are backed up by reasons to believe. So let's break down this definition to, into its parts. The first element is that a value proposition is a promise. It's a promise of value. Now this promise means that your product or your brand needs to offer a set of benefits to customers. This is the answer to the question, What's in it for me? What do I get from your product or your company or your brand? These benefits can be of three types. They can be functional benefits, and these are examples are for features and functionality a product might have. They are economic benefits, and that is time and money and savings that they might get. And there are emotional benefits. It's a sense of emotions and feelings and affiliation that people might feel with the brand. So the promise really is a combination of these functional, economic, and emotional benefits. Now this promise you make needs to be compelling, but it also needs to be differentiated from alternatives that customers might have. Now these benefits, that these claims of differentiation that you make, need to be made 
to a specific target audience. Why is that? Because value is contextual. Value is in the eye of the beholder. There's no such thing as objective value. So when we talk about a promise of value, we have to specify who is this for, what type of customers, what types of situations, what types of scenarios is your product or service best designed for? Where does it find the best application? For example, McDonald's has a lot of value for me in the situation when I need a quick, convenient meal and I have children. But on the other hand, if I'm going out for a special dinner, then it's a very different sense of value. So at that point, it, it, even though I'm the same individual, the context becomes important. So value is contextual. Therefore, you need to specify what context, what target audience, what scenario is your value proposition geared towards. The final idea is that when you specify this differentiation, you make a claim. Now, these claims need to be backed up by evidence. So the final element of the value proposition definition is the reasons to believe or support. So in summary, we define the value proposition as a promise of value that you make to a specific target audience that is differentiated from alternatives that customers might consider and is backed up by reasons to believe. So that, in summary, is what we mean by the customer value proposition. OK, so after I listened to this guy, I thought I'd start and get the idea. This promise of value thing, got, got that, that makes sense. Value proposition, promise of value, right? Benefit, speci specifically around benefits to certain customers, and I saw this in um, Nigel's presentation today, I can understand what the value promise was. Had to be differentiated and they had to be backed up by empirical evidence to, that supported your promise. Got that, got that. I thought, yes, I'm onto it. My mission is on its way, but I needed to understand more about value. So I went back to YouTube and I looked for something that would explain to me what value was. And here he is. Reese's products provide a source of negativity, chemicals, and basically garbage to my lung with the potential of damage and even killing, right? Which way am I going to go? I'm not going to cigarette. Which way am I going? I'm going to go where there's value, not where there's price. Don't you get it? Unless I'm not a cigar, unless I don't appreciate a cigar. Now, I'm going to tell you where I'm going to go. I'm going for this Trinidad, not because it's better, because I know it better. Okay? And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Look, when I know something, when I'm familiar with something, when I have rapport with something, when I trust something, I will pay the extra price. What does that have to do with you? Look, you got to know your customer. You've got to stay in touch with your customer. You've got to love that customer. You've got to stay interested in that customer, their family, their business. So they're like, I like this guy. You know, I'm paying him a little more for the same product I can get down the street, but I like him. In fact, they're so impressed with you, they never shop down the street. That's the value price concept. It's not about a price. It's not about a product. It's about that relationship. It's about how do you make a difference? How do you really build value? <laughs> so I'm not paying that 50 bucks. In fact, I look forward to it. In fact, I don't want to buy one of them. I want to buy a whole box of them and make sure I can give them back to the U.S. Bank. Okay, there's a way to do that. It's a different conversation. Have a great week. <laughs> <laughs> Train right now, okay? Train, train your attitude. Stay motivated, stay excited, and stay focused on the fact that price is a myth. It's a myth. Value, value is the thing that all people really want. <laughs> so I was onto it at this stage. I was committed, I was focused, and I was going to train more. I was going to learn more about this value proposition stuff. So I now knew it was about a promise. Right? It was about customers, it was about getting them to know me and the value and what, you, what the outdoors was about. But like everything else, I had to confirm what I was doing, so I went back to YouTube one last time and got a final, another guru on, on the value proposition, so I knew where I was going. So my last clip here, before I carried on, I found this guy. What is the value proposition? Four things. Number one, it's short. Number two, it's specific. Number three, it's in the customer's language. And number four, it passes the seat of the pants test. A value proposition is a crystal clear statement of how your product or service solves a customer's problem, delivers some benefits, and improves their situation. 
all wrapped up and presented in a simple, compelling way that moves a prospective customer to take action and engage in further discussions with you. What you've got to do when you build your value proposition is you've got to get inside your customer's head and you've got to interview them and you've got to record that conversation because they're going to tell you things in that conversation that you never thought. I just had a conversation with somebody who was visiting a customer. He brought four of their clients into the room and all four of them told him different reasons for why they use the product than his client had explained. That's reality. Customers describe what you have, what you offer, and what you do in a completely different way than you do. Finally, passing the seat of the pants test. The seat of the pants test is nothing more complicated than this. If someone sits up higher in their chair and goes, you know what, I would, that's what I've been looking for. I want to get it. How do I buy it? You know you have a killer value proposition. Right. So that was the final stage. I now know it's about customers. I've got to have the reality test and the seat of the pants test. So at this stage, I decided I need to go out and do some more research. So I approached Garth at Outdoors New Zealand for some funding to become a customer in the outdoors, to go to America with my family as a customer <laughs> and understand what the value proposition was. So here we are. Garth gave me 30 grand and said, Grant, go forth. The, the session you're running today is so important to the success of this forum that we will fund you. So we travelled light <laughs> and we headed off to the States. The first thing I got when I got off the airplane, I knew I was on the right track because I saw this poster in a window. Here was the value proposition. What is this advertising? Bank of the West. Go West, I knew I was on the track. <laughs> value proposition, out here the pursuit of happiness is like a walk in the park. My mission was being accomplished, I was on my, on my way, I could see the promise of value that this bank had. So off I went, I went and sought some value. So I bought this small vehicle, I hired this vehicle. <laughs> and we headed off. Outdoors New Zealand was not skimpy on funds. This had four double beds in it. It had an ensuite bathroom, a shower, TV, DVD, satellite, TV, the whole nine yards. And off we went looking for the value of the outdoors. You've got to understand that I've been there once before, or more times than once, but my, my, the promise of value that I'd sought 30 years earlier was the fact that the outdoors in, in the States offered the best big wall climbing and the, some of the best free climbing in the world. Now, I understood that promise of value, but what could I discover now with my family, because it was a different value proposition, the, the, what I was looking for now is more akin to selling it to the rest of New Zealand. So off I went on my journey, and I was back in the valley, but I wasn't up on the nose this time. We were playing in the Merced River, all right? Clicked. And it was obvious that we were having the most fun time in the world. Do you know how many people visit Yosemite every year? Five million. Five million people, and it's generally in a very short space of time. But we were basically by ourselves here because they all do their thing, and we were having a great fun, and the family were really enjoying this. So, so there's a value around having fun and family enjoyment in the outdoors, which we probably don't portray well enough. We also went on these adventures. This is in Zion Canyon. We were going into the Narrows in Zion. Um, most of the people walking up this stop after half an hour, and the kids and I, we carried on for um, three hours up this canyon. It was an absolutely unbelievable adventure, something they'll never forget. There were snakes sitting on the rocks, and there were eagles and things flying overhead. And uh, we went on these walks, and you now this is my the eight-year-old who's having a birthday today, who hates me now, <laughs> walking away from me as usual, nonchalantly on these on these paths that no you know grown adults would would not want to walk along. And I had to tell her to hang on to this chain that was the only thing stopping it falling off. So again, great adventures at any age group. The other thing that the national parks had was this junior ranger program 
where at every park for no charge the kids could go up and sign up to be junior rangers. They were given workbooks, they learned to balance the environment, um, flora and fauna, looking after the park. They would go and do assignments, go to ranger talks, and then when they completed their books, they'd have to take a pledge with a ranger that they would solemnly uphold the values of the park and look after it and tell everyone else about the park. And you can see that he's starting to collect his park badges as he went around the country. He collected 10 park ranger badges as he went around. So the value of the outdoors there, the promise of value, is that education um, and connection to those wild spaces. Getting to see different ecosystems and flora and fauna. Here she is again, she's got her little video camera and she's out there filming the, um, the mule deer that were walking past our small camper van um, every morning and experiencing that and different things. And the, the tarantula that was crawling across in front of our camper van that morning. So again, the fact that the world is different. We took the kids out of school because airline tickets are much cheaper. Outdoors New Zealand wasn't going to fund all of the money to fly them in the holidays. But I think they got more education on, those, on that trip than um, by staying in school. Yosemite, you know, John Muir is the guy who, um, who campaigned over 100 years ago for the formation of the National Park well ahead of his time and what he said there in terms of everyone needs beauty as well as bread, places to play in and pray in where nature may heal and cheer and give strength to the body and soul alike. One of those promises of value that I don't think we portray very well to the general public as well. And you know we found places there that the kids just sat there awestruck um, and contemplated their life and their position in the world. You take that juxtaposition when we drove back into LA, hit the smog bank just um, halfway between Las Vegas and LA, and the sun was going down as a giant, beautiful orange ball, but into the smog bank. The only reason it was orange was because of the so all those fluoro fluoro fluorohydrocarbons. So this is something that we have as a promise of value to society. And at the end, it's the whole thing about bringing us together as a family through that shared experience. And I reckon that's something we really need to sell as a value, a promise of value to the people of New Zealand. So I'm wrapping up. What I just want you to think about during this little presentation is what are we going to sell as our promise of value? Click. <coughs> I think we promise jobs, all of us here in jobs. The government measures things in terms of money. All right, jobs are one of those measures. We're doing some work on what they are. Click. Just keep clicking until the thing's filled up, please. We have all of these benefits that I think we can sell. There's one more. The last one, probably least of all, because it's foremost in our minds, but uh, sport New Zealand have just done some work on the value of sport and recreation in the outdoors. <coughs> what is it? 4.2 bill is 5.2 billion as a total GDP input is sport and recreation. We're unfortunately not able to pull out the outdoor component of that very easily, but that's something I think we should do into the future because we need to actually say to society that we have a tangible thing. We're not just out there playing all the time. We actually add a lot of value. So the concept is, you think about this during the rest of the conference. Alex is going to give you an opportunity at the end of this conference to um, contribute as Outdoors New Zealand moves forward on creating a promise of value, and promises of value is what I would say, for the outdoors so that we can better sell ourselves, our businesses, and our way of life to society and New Zealand as a whole. Thanks very much. <laughs> you have answered my question about why I didn't get any financial statements last month, though. <laughs> so we'll have a chat later, yeah. But uh, Grant, on behalf of us, a bottle of wine and a cigarette. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you. I think Grant's talk was, was really important because one of the things um, uh, that came up this week is. Um, 
a radio interview that I've been asked to do next week about the value of education uh, on the nine till noon show. And the whole, the whole angle of, or the premise of the conversation is whether we as a sector and as a country are putting kids in too much risk and essentially whether we need to tone it down. And so for me, undoubtedly there's a balance that we need to take. And so some of that goes into, I guess, the ongoing debate that takes place about uh, perceived risk, real risk, um, what's the best way of educating kids in the outdoors. But it also goes back to fundamentally that we, as a sector, need to be able to articulate what we offer the community and what we offer society at large. Because unless we do it, others won't. And so I think, um, well, hopefully what I'll try and convey uh, in this radio interview, given a chance, is that actually we do an awful lot. I mean, I, I can remember the days um, when I was immersed in outdoor education and recreation, and I know um, the people that I was involved in in those camps today. I, I, I don't know some of the people that I went through uni with or with college with, but the bonds that we formed were immense. So I think that, that's, that's one of the challenges that we, um, as a sector, collectively face. Now, I think there is some housekeeping matters to take place. Garth, you're still with us, at least for another couple of minutes before we get to you. So I'll let you uh, tell people what they need to do. Thanks. Kia ora tato. Uh, I'm Garth Dawson. I'm the CEO of Outdoors New Zealand. Um, I'll just be leading you through the rest of the of the uh, forum. And being the anchor man, as someone downstairs said earlier on. Um, so just a couple of uh, adjustments to the program and some advice on things that are going on. And I'll let you get your books out. <laughs> As Alex mentioned earlier, um, Josie Ogden Schroeder, our vice chair, has had a family misfortune this weekend. Sorry. As Alex mentioned this morning, Josie Ogden Schroeder um, has had a sort of a family misfortune this weekend, so she won't be presenting um, in the second session after morning tea. But Ihi Heke will be taking her place. So that'll be here in the main room. And he'll be uh, doing his presentation that was going to be at the bottom of the page there. Um, Māori in the Outdoors, the whakapapa of Māori Wilderness Connection. Um, another couple of changes to that section there is um, I've just been asked to note that the Outward Bound Boys, Rob, John and Dan, the title of their presentation is What is the Point of Outdoor Education if You Don't Want to Be a Guide? Rather than Outdoor Adventure Recreation. Um, and Grant's presentation, the NZRRP launch, will be in Cuba 5, not in water safety over the road. That is uh, near the bottom of the page. Okay, those are the those are the little changes I've got to that part of it. Um, we're breaking for morning tea now, and then when you come back, everything will be magically transformed into our discussion rooms. So this will be split up. Um, there will be... No? Oh no, sorry, plenary. Sorry, after lunch that is. Sorry about that. So two more plenary sessions in here after morning tea. Um, if you are intending to attend the AGM tomorrow afternoon, could you check with Anne downstairs and make sure that your membership status is all up to date? Um, if you'd like to attend the awards dinner this evening, the outdoor awards dinner, there are still our tickets available, but we need to confirm the numbers by lunchtime. 
So again, if you could see Anne and Yosan at the at the admin desk downstairs, that'd be really good. And a reminder that um, we would like to hear how you like are and enjoying all the presentations and stuff. There's not response forms for every presentation. There's one for the whole conference. So if you'd like to fill in your form, that'd be really useful for us. Gives us great feedback on how we can improve it for next year. And um, as Alex said, you'll one person will win a spankingly smart marmot jacket if you put in your um, feedback. That's it for me, and um, I'll see you up here at 11:30. Uh,